So I was looking at a list of all the video games released in the last few years, let's say like a 2019 through uh, today, that I actually played to completion, or at least put a respectable number of hours into. Uh, and one thing that jumped out at me is that a good, um, it looks like about 70-75% of that not particularly huge list is games of the uh, pixel art, uh, neo-retro variety that I remember, uh, I don't know if it started with Mega Man 9 back in 2008, but Mega Man 9 is the time I really remember it kind of solidifying as a uh, as a subgenre of short of sorts. The uh, the neo retro pixel art looks like it came from the NES or Super NES days, and uh, now it's a, it's a such a huge genre. On uh, like I look at the Switch eShop, there it's it looks like it's half of the fucking eShop really. But yeah, I was looking over this list of games. You know, you had uh, Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon, uh, one and two. Two I did a review of on my main channel, uh, Cyber Shadow, Rise of the Third Power, which I recently reviewed on this channel, uh, TMNT, Shredder's Revenge, just came out a few weeks ago, uh, The Messenger, Blasphemous, Axiom Verge 2, uh, the only one of the ones I just named that I haven't beaten, actually. I got pretty deep into it, then my PS4 just crapped out, and I lost all my save data, and I never picked it up again, but, yeah, and it's, uh, looking at all these, it really does, I have to reflect, is this a legitimate form of artistic, uh, equally valid artistic expression for game creators and artists and graphics designers that I'm just a connoisseur, an appreciator of, you know, a, a sommelier of, right? Or is this, uh, you know, cope? Am I stuck in gaming arrested development? And, uh, yeah, even expanding on that, I look at the list of games not in this pixel art style they beat in the last few years, and Suddenly, uh, stuff jumps out of me, like, uh, Trials of Mana, Link's Awakening, Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, uh, what stands out about all these to you? It's right there at the end of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. They're all remakes of stuff I played as a, as a youth in the 90s. No, I think I played, uh, Trials of Mana back when it was Saiken Densetsu 3, right, on, a emulator, probably about 2001, 2002, but... Yeah, I don't know, I mean, I... I'm not saying that I don't legitimately admire the artistry of what some of the, most of the games I just named are able to pull off. I mean, I think like Blasphemous has beautiful dark gothic fantasy visuals. I, I think that uh, Rise of the Third Power, which I just reviewed, does a great job evoking the look of Chrono Trigger. But the fact that I can appreciate those things, uh, do they have legitimate qualities on par with the most modern graphics? Or is this just a case where I'm stuck playing these games, like mentally stuck, I mean, not like I can't afford <laughs> the more modern games, but am I mentally stuck playing these games because they remind me of fonder or simpler times? Times before I had to worry about rent or bills or uh, the, the medical effects of becoming elderly, which I am. But uh, I don't quite have an answer. I didn't start uh, recording this little jerk-off video here with like a thesis statement in mind, more just a posed question. Am I stuck in gaming Arrested Development, or is there a legitimate quality to these games? But evidence for the uh, former, the being stuck in Arrested Development, is uh, probably the most universally acclaimed, beloved, glowingly received from critics and audiences and uh, essay writers and video makers alike game I can remember in a very long time. Not just game, the piece of art in general is this Elden Ring that came out a few months ago. Everyone was going bananas over it. I remember, you know, Elon Musk tweeting on Twitter that it's the most important piece of art he's ever played. Uh, Brandon Sanderson, you know, a fantasy author making YouTube videos, multiple ones on how great it is. Like this was the this was a true artistic, creative, cultural phenomenon. This Elden Ring game, right? I downloaded it uh, like a few days after it came out. I was like, okay, I gotta see what the fuss is. I put, I don't know five to ten hours into it and I was just forcing myself I was basically forcing myself to keep playing even the little bit I was playing I felt like I was ramming my head against it I just didn't feel that much drive to explore the world or meet the boss monsters and I, I this in no way I don't presume to make a review of it because I don't think I experienced two percent of the game's content for me to say I can review Elden Ring would be like a you know, someone, a, a food critic sniffing the food at a restaurant and then writing a full review of it, it wouldn't make any sense. I, I didn't play the game. I sampled the game, but yeah, I was just, I even the little bit I was playing, I was forcing myself through. And this is like 
easily the most acclaimed game of the decade so far. Like, I don't think there's really any, any contest on that. It is the most acclaimed video game of the 2020s so far, period, by a distance. And I just, I just, I don't know, I just couldn't do it. Admittedly, part of that might be that, uh, one of the few games that defies my being stuck in gaming arrested development theory is that, uh, some of the more modern games I actually did play is just over probably two games a year over the last couple years before this year. I played through uh, Far Cry 3, Far Cry 4, Far Cry 5, and Far Cry 6. Like I said, probably two games a year. So, uh, what, three and four back in um, 2020, uh, five and six like last year, 2021. I think that sounds right. I know I played through Far Cry 6 last year. So it's possible that at the time Elden Ring came out, I was just flat out uh, open worlded out. You know, I just couldn't couldn't mentally invest in another open world. I, I'd spent too much time exploring open worlds. But really, uh, Elden Ring should have appealed to me even more than any Far Cry game did because high fantasy, epic fantasy, dark fantasy, monsters, magic. That is my my genre. You know, that's my thing. That's always what I've been obsessed with across all mediums: literature, video games, film, TV, animation. That's that, that's always been like my my true passion. Everyone else these days is superheroes. High fantasy is still my thing. And I might want to do a little video on looking at this upcoming slate of high fantasy coming out and how we're returning to the 80s if, if, in to that extent in some way. But yeah, I don't know. It's It was a weird experience to be trying to play this Elden Ring and feeling kind of guilty <laughs> that I wasn't able to get into it. Not the first time that's happened either, me trying to play like a massively acclaimed game and just kind of ramming, ramming my head against it. Uh, it happened with Horizon Zero Dawn a few years ago also. Got that for PS4. Unimaginably acclaimed. Like, considered the best of the best of the best the time it came out, right? But I played it and I was just like... <sighs> Again, I had to was forcing myself through about 10... Maybe I played more than 10 of that one. Maybe I played like 15 hours, but I couldn't beat it either. And I don't know, it's, it's weird. It's... And that's not me trying to critique the game so much as saying, like, there's something wrong with my brain. That I can get these massively acclaimed games, universally considered masterpieces, and I just can't do it. But uh, it set me in front of a new pixel art game, like Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2, or uh, Cyber Shadow the other year, or just Rise of the Third Power, this JRPG I just finished playing. And, uh, yeah, I can just plug away at it for hours a day, every, uh, every day, no, no problem at all. Maybe part of the problem is that a lot of these more modern games tend to feature quite a bit of dialogue, so that makes it uh, kind of difficult to listen to podcasts or YouTube shows while I play, like I do with some of these uh, pixel art style games, which rarely have spoken dialogue. But then again, Elden Ring had huge stretches of no dialogue too, so it's no excuse there. But I don't know, I guess I'm... Maybe I am really stuck in the past playing these uh, pixel art games with their chiptunes, but... At the same time, I mean, I don't know, why would I be even stuck in the past in that sense? Because, I mean, my childhood wasn't idyllic by any means. I mean, I was relatively, un let's be frank, I was relatively unpopular. Like, you know, from second grade up through senior year of high school. Not, you know, if you, if you were to rank uh, high school popularity on about like six tiers, I wasn't on the bottom tier. The next tier up from that, eh, maybe like bordering between the next two tiers above that, you know. Certain group of friends, but uh, not a particularly active uh, love life by any stretch of the imagination. I uh, uh, wasn't part of like the, uh, the, uh, the, the most acclaimed groups in the high school yearbook. I uh, didn't have all the smiling prom pictures, so I don't know. I, so sh I don't, certainly junior high, which is, I mean, junior high is... At that point, we were out of the pixel art era and into the 3D era. I don't know. I don't necessarily uh, link that with the happiest uh, memories. In a lot of ways, like my 20s are probably better. You know, I actually got laid in my 20s, which I didn't particularly in my youth. So I don't know. I I don't know if it's necessary. I, so that's why I said I don't approach this video with answers to this phenomenon because. Uh, my inability to get into the massively acclaimed games of the day uh, does speak to the idea that, yeah, maybe I am kind of stuck in a mental rut to only be able to seem to invest in a new game if it's a pixel art game or maybe a uh, RPG remake like Final Fantasy VII or Trials of Mana. But at the same time, I don't know, why am I flashing back to fonder times, supposedly, if I don't particularly think of them as fonder times on any level? But either way, yeah. 
I don't know. I, I can't explain it. My uh, gaming habits and hobbies are weird. They, they don't make any sense, so I'll ignore, I'll find myself ignoring a game that millions of people are playing to play a game that like two dozen people are playing, and that's fine. I, I don't feel any uh, shame about not liking the most popular thing and ha being part of niche little micro communities. Uh, it's fine with me, but it is just kind of a... It'd be weird to say, like, I feel guilty. I mean, you shouldn't... <laughs> video games are ultimately video games. There's no need to feel guilty or not about what you, what you like, but... It's this weird thing where I, I feel like I'm missing something, but then when I try the thing that I feel like I'm missing, the more acclaimed, high-tech, ultra-modern graphics, modern games, I'm kind of like forcing myself to pretend to enjoy it. Like the couple times in my youth I tried to pretend to uh, like sports, to you know, fit in with the people in Texas where I grew up. Uh, it was it was a it was a forced thing. It was, there was nothing natural about it. It was having your shoes on the wrong foot. And uh, trying to convince yourself it's fine. So that's that's the weird space the space that I'm uh, stuck in. And I'm not gonna end this uh, with a a plea to try to change. Cause uh, I'll be honest, my little wish list I have on the various uh, console eShops right now, it's uh, mostly pixel art type stuff like this uh, cross code and and, and uh, a ton of other stuff like that. A few exceptions, of course. I mean, I will set aside the time to play Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 next year, but. A lot of times I look at the uh, ultra-modern, high-tech uh, stuff coming up, and I, I'm not trying to be a contrarian. I, I don't get off on that necessarily. If I happen to like a thing that's massively popular, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to. I just move it. I love the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So does most everyone else. So I'm not king contrarian here by any means. But uh, a lot of the games I, I feel like. As someone who finds the medium of gaming interesting, at least in abstract, I should be excited for some of these, but I just can't make myself do it. So I don't know. Yeah, it's the the pixel art way, pixel art and chip tunes. Those are those are the way for me, and doesn't seem like that's particularly going to change. And I guess it's okay as long as I keep an open mind about the possibility of something more modern uh, appealing to me and grabbing me. But yep, yeah. that's about it.